is kind of really an integrated approach so that you can get ready for the practical. Mm -hmm. Now, as he sits here, I've done the H-E-E-N-T -E -E exam. Now, the first thing that my eyes are going to is I see the external jugular here, and I do not see the internal jugular elevated. This is where we want to read jugular venous distension. The reason that you don't want to rely on the external jugular is that if you bear down, if you take in a deep breath, just like Elmer, mm -hmm. you can actually make the vein columns stand straight up and people get mixed up by reading that instead of the internal jugular. So that's the first note I'm making. Now, do me a favor, Tech, and swing your knees over that way. Now, I'm very concerned about the cyanosis that we see here. Now, can you get your back a little bit more toward me? Perfect. Okay. So the first thing is I'm going to look for spinal deformities, and I see no scoliosis, no kyphosis. Now, I'm going to measure the AP diameter. Now, AP, if you can lift up your arm, is here. Now, that should be approximately half of the transverse diameter, and it is. So his AP to transverse diameter is 1 to 2. Okay. Now, I don't see any signs of respiratory distress. Now, I'm going to move to palpation. Now, when you say 99, watch my hand pattern. 99. I go from 99. side to side, and 99. then I 99. switch. 99. 99. Phrematus diminishes in the periphery. Now, remember the little lip story? Okay, I'm going to do respiratory excursion. Now, inhale, please, and exhale. So respiratory excursion is equal. Now, this is the extra step that I push in. I'm going to palpate the parathoracic, and I would have started with the paracervical. And I go all the way down to the paralumbar muscles. Did that cause any pain? No. And I did not find any sacral edema. So all of those things are actually through palpation. Now, can you think of anything else that should be palpation? Now we go to percussion. Now, the tops of the lungs literally come up here, the apices. So notice what I'm going to do. No ribs under here, so I'm going to use three strike. That's resonant. Resonant to percussion. Now, this is where, if you can just kind of sit on the edge of the table, that's perfect. Now, don't lean over. <laughs> okay, now, look at my finger. That's between ribs. Now. Now, that's resonant. It's through cloth. Now, I know that this is the bottom of the scapula. So, that's going to be about the seventh rib. Now, on the right side, I do the maneuver a little bit differently, but see how natural this is. Please take in a deep breath and hold it. This is going to be diaphragmatic excursion. Hold it. Okay, exhale and hold it. Okay, so your diaph you can breathe now. <laughs> your diaphragmatic excursion is this many centimeters. So that's about four centimeters, which is in the normal range. You could hear it. See how easy that was? Now, I'll do the same thing over bone, and the sound's going to change. Now, inhale and hold it. I can't tell where the dullness comes, so don't make the mistake that they make. That's not precise. Here comes the other big percussion, CVA tenderness. This is over the kidney. Now, if you had pyelonephritis tech, you would have flown off the table. Yeah. But, obviously, you don't. Now, how easy is this? Now, we're going to move on to auscultation. Now, I want you to tell me the normal breath sounds. So, tech, can you take in some nice deep breaths with your mouth open? Okay. Bronchovesicular sounds auscultated, i.e. ratio 3 to 1 soft. Big breath. Between the scapula, I hear bronchovesicular sounds, i.e. ratios 1 to 1. These are louder sounds. 
Now do you see how I'm imitating the pattern I did on Trematus? Now again I have vesicular sounds. I'm listening over the basses. It goes side to side. Great job. Okay. Now, I would report if I heard any crackles. No crackles, no adventitious sounds. Now show me how you do one voice sound. Egophony or any of the voice sounds confirms the presence of consolidation and normally that's going to be a consolidated pneumonia. That's a bacterial pneumonia. So could you say E for me? E, 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 E. No E to A changes, therefore no consolidation. Very good, thank you. <clears throat> now you can sit square, perfect. Now, notice I'm just walking around so there's no shortness of breath. Now this is actually a great time to get your respiratory rate. You don't have to count that for me because I know you do that every day, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's no respiratory distress, no accessory muscle use. Now could you lie down for me? Good. Now I'll pull this out so you've got place to put your Perfect. Now, Tech, you're such a nice volunteer. Now we're going to look at jugular venous distension and see if there is any. Now what we want to do is we want to turn the head slightly. Now, we don't want to use the external jugular. Now how to tell where that is? Go to the angle of the jaw and go to the proximal third of the clavicle and we can actually trace it. Do me a favor. Do a valsalva, in other words, bear down for us please. Okay, see how it shows up? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Let go, let go. That's not good for you. <laughs> now, don't read that. Please, that, that's not heart failure. Okay, now this, there's this little depression right here, and this is actually where the internal jugular vein is. This is where my middle finger is, is where you want to read. Now, you can see, right, come over here, Christine. We don't want to miss this. This is exciting, right there. See where my middle finger is? Right there. See how it's not an arterial pulsation? Uh, it ripples, it kind of goes. Okay, now find the sternal angle, and what we would do is we would have a ruler, and we're going to put the ruler here, and so basically the column of blood is no higher than zero, zero JVD. Now, JVD that's greater than two is abnormal, so I'll just make something up. Let's say this is how high that internal jugular is. Uh-oh, now let's see how much that would be. Oh, heavens forbid. Look how many JVD centimeters that is. One, one, one two, two, three, four, five. five. <gasps> That's heart failure. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready to palpate. Now, I go for the apical pulse. Okay, it's at the fifth intercostal space, left sternal, midclavicular line, just medial. And it is a one by two. Tricuspid area has a light pulsation. Herbs area, pulmonic, and the aortic. Now we take the ears, put our stethoscopes on, and we say, okay, at the apex, I hear S1 louder, love dub. The same with the tricuspid area. At herbs, I hear S1 louder, love dub. And at the base, over the pulmonic and aortic areas, I hear S2 louder, lub dub. Flip your stethoscope and tell me, verbalize this. Now I'm using the bell, and I'm going to go back and listen for abnormal sounds. Okay, no abnormal sounds auscultated, and then I will ask you two questions about the extra heart sounds, S3 and S4. So the middle section that had the cadence, and the cause, those are the questions I'm going to ask. Now, was this tough? Mm -hmm. Now, I'll finish up the <laughs> respiratory. So what I would do is I have already inspected, and so I could palpate for Fremitus. Say 99? 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. Fremitus decreases. There's probably no need to percuss 